top of the show today, you'll let me know about Yo Gotti and Jay Z and them suing a Mississippi prison. I hadn't heard this. I definitely want to hear the details. Yeah, the man. Too. Right after we left the podcast yesterday, I seen it came over my phone that Jay Z and Yo Gotti were talking to the governor of Mississippi and they were considering suing over prison conditions. Now, um, I was like, whoa, this is a crazy headline. I read it, looked through it. I was like, man, it's serious. Yeah. Today, it confirmed that they were very serious. Now, attorneys are working with Yo Gotti and Jay-Z to file lawsuits in federal court Tuesday on behalf of 29 inmates against Mississippi federal officials. The lawsuit alleges inmates are being kept in unconstitutional and inhumane conditions. Now, this is something Jay-Z and Yo, um, this is a uh, coming courtesy of the uh, attorney, excuse me. Plaintiff's lives are in peril. The lawsuit begins. Individuals held in Mississippi prisons are dying because Mississippi has failed to fund its prisons, resulting in prisons where violence reigns because prisons are understaffed. In the past two weeks alone, five men incarcerated in Mississippi have died as a result of prison violence. These deaths are a result of Mississippi's utter disregard for the people it has incarcerated and their constitutional rights. Um, there's also a video involved in that. I, I may be able to play that once we go through our commentary. I want to make sure it's clear. I didn't get yeah. to listen to it yet, but a recent outbreak of deadly violence that has left five inmates dead and an unknown number of others wounds have thrown the brutal conditions at Mississippi prisons into the national spotlight. The Mississippi Department of Corrections has said the violence is gang related. Prisoners rights advocates say long running systematic problems with over incarceration and underfunding of the prison system created an environment that breeds violence. Lastly, the federal lawsuit was filed against the MDOC Commissioner Policia Hall, who is stepping down this week for a job in the private sector and the superintendent of the Mississippi State Penitentiary at Pacman, Marshall Turner. Oh, God, what you think of this, man? I, I first, I'm gonna start off by saying this. Um, first of all, it's a great thing to see this, and oftentimes people in the prison system they kind of get, you know, uh, forgot about. You know, people don't. People got this stigma and ideology that okay, they did the crime, throw them away. I don't care how the prison is. I don't care if it's hot, it's cold. They did a crime, so they get thrown away. They get forgot about. I mean, this is a Short of, sort of a godsend to have somebody, rappers, you know, using their time, money, and resources, you know, to try to address the forgotten about people, to try to get them some help. I mean, it's something that you see only in movies, you know what I mean? So, you know, it's a start. Obviously, we had a lot of different conversations. We went back and forth about Jay-Z. We don't agree with everything that he does, but we do agree with what he's trying to do in, in the prison system. We, we uh, agreed 100% over here that, you know, we salute him, you know, and moving forward with his, uh, you know, criminal justice initiative that he has, trying to uh, get laws changed. Now taking a step to sue the prisons, because they always say, like, the only thing they're going to understand is large number of people, you know, and money, you know what I mean, and, and legality. So they'll keep going, and they don't care because it's profitable, and, you know, Throw them some food, put them in a hole, fuck them. That's that's the whole ideology. But now you got people that are big wigs, billionaires and millionaires now saying, all right, nah, we're going to step in and get some remedy for these people and get the law and take this thing to court. Now things begin to start changing. You know what I mean? So it's it, a lot of ways you can go about this, but I'd say 100% that I salute that. I don't know all the facts, you know, obviously what you read, but. The gesture right now, I think, is 100% genuine. You only, only you could do is salute something like that, Sam, man. Yeah, it's scary as hell when you think about it. When you think about the amount of, of black males <clears throat> and, and males of color who sit behind prison walls for nonviolent crimes. And like you elaborated to, when, and especially when we out here in the civilian world, when we hear somebody go to prison, we automatically throw them away like they're a piece of meat. Um, assuming mm -hmm. that they're one way, assuming that they're all the same way and they're in prison for a reason. They don't deserve human rights where if I was right. not mistaken, it claims that the Eighth Amendment, which prohibits cruel and unusual punishment, is violated when prison officials fail to protect against prison related violence and when prison conditions fail to meet basic wow. human needs. That's in the amendments. Yet when you can look and listen to prison stories all throughout this country, whether it be in the county, whether it be a federal prison, yep. um, obviously there's levels to certain wherever you're at. And these stories happen all the time. 
we we see these kind of occurrences happening all the time. We see stories. I seen plenty of stories back in 2019 of people looking for their uh, family members or loved ones who happen to be inmates that they haven't heard from in a while. We're in a fight. We're in the infirmary and now not seen or heard from again. That, that would scare me to death. And to think that either one, it's a nonviolent crime or two, they in there for the sole purpose of a quota being met and didn't really do anything wrong to begin with. When you talk about rappers like whoever's out there, in particular right. Yo Gotti and Jay Z, giving hope to the hopeless and voice to the voiceless, how can you not salute this? These are people that are putting their money where their mouth is. Mm -hmm. They don't have to think about these men sitting in these conditions, obviously racially uh, driven and motivated in a state like Mississippi where it's synonymous for the shit. Yeah, salute. Yeah, Jay Z and Yo Gotti for doing something, giving hope to the voiceless and the hopeless man. Because if they don't, who will? You know what I mean? And, and I hope people can follow more suit and start doing things like this. Once you get to a certain level, because I'm not saying that you at you ain't at Jay Z's level going and donating and doing the things, but follow suit. But it all, I mean, it all is relative, though. They all can help on their own little level. Exactly. You know I mean, you don't have to be a billionaire. You know what I mean? To to help causes like this. I, I me mean, personally, I think that Jay Z waited till he got to a point where he could be a financial powerhouse, a billionaire Makes sense. before he started, you know, because again, if you know Jay-Z, like we both know him listening to his music, he always had that message with him, even from like 96 uh -huh. kind of, but he, it seemed like he had to kind of go in, you know, in the trenches and live, live that. I ain't saying that I agree with it or disagree. I'm just saying he had to go in through the trenches and just conform to get the money and get the, um, you know, the fame and whatnot and ultimately the power to now start, start helping people. I mean, I haven't found any critic yet that, you know, um, has brought anything that could say he's trying to deceive the people in, in regard to the, um, you know, um, pr prison reform. I haven't seen that yet. You know what I'm saying? Now, right. it's a lot of things with the NFL and everything. We got a lot of differences in opinion with that. But as far as, you know, him, well, how could you get mad at that? Like, you're trying to sue the prison system. Do people know what happens in these prisons? Like, you talked about, you know, the people and stuff dying in the prisons. A lot of times be the guards and stuff. You know, a lot of these prisons is known, on. yeah, for, for for um the guard. They're like, the guards will kill you and throw you under the jail, all this type of stuff, you know? And it's like, you're at the mercy of the system when you're in the system. But you need people out there that are going to be a beacon of light, a voice, you know what I mean, to help, you know, these people, you know, and um ultimately get them in court and get them a second chance, you know, um at life. Regardless of whether they did it or not, they still deserve to have basic fundamental heat, water, food, you know, um, healthy living conditions, medical care. I don't, I don't have no problem, you know, with prisoners and stuff getting that. I just don't, you know what I mean? So definitely. Let me speak on this before we get out of here. Cause this is something that we definitely need to highlight for the people watching. Now we talked about the reasoning, um, that the guards and the excuses they want to make is gang violence and things like that. But the conditions at these prisons are absolutely disgusting. I'm reading and it's making my stomach turn. They said in parchment and units are subject to flooding black mold festers, rats and mice infest the prison units lack running water and electricity for days at a time. The lawsuit says now the lawsuit is asking the judge to order the MDOC officials to develop and implement a plan to protect inmates from violence and failure to timely respond to emergency conditions, assuring an adequate level of properly trained staff and to provide safe and clean conditions free from filth and vermin and with adequate assets to exercise outdoor recreation, showers, lighting, sanitation, plumbing, ventilation and other basic human needs that these brothers aren't getting right now. This is crazy. Yeah. Salute to Jay-Z and, and Yo Gotti for real. Yep. I mean, you can't, there's no way you can say that. Oh, you know, this, that, and what other rapper is putting his money, you know, besides buying jewels and doing dumb shit. So, you know, um, so salute them for uh, definitely doing that, man. I think that's dope. Facts. Yes, sir. But you tune into the Hip Hop Uncensored podcast with your brother, Old Guy and Sam, man. We're going in today. I want to talk about, you know, this, Sam, man. We didn't put it on a list today, but um, Timberland, you know, pretty much opened up about his you know um battle with painkillers now he says it started you know um in 2011 when timbo said he received some prescription painkillers after getting a root canal he said after a while obviously he got addicted to it and um he also goes on to say pretty much um things started spiraling out of control um back in 2013 the irs filed a four million dollar lien for three years of unpaid taxes he said the painkillers provided an escape. He said, it put me in a great feeling of not caring and just being free. 
Um, I'm like traveling and doing shows, popping them, having fun, just being ignorant. Um, he also goes on to say that um, he had a dream. This was like was a turning point for him that he pretty much saw himself with a white face. And um, now he's free. He put a picture up saying, man, to pretty much show himself, you know, um, healthy. Again, he kicked the habit. What do you think about this, Sam, man? Sal uh, Timbo. Salute. Salute to Timbaland. Yeah. Um, one of the greatest producers of our era. Obviously, we didn't get to know our, our people that we, we looked up to and idolized the way the generation now get to see their people right in front of us. Because right. I'm sure if we had technology the way it is now, we would see some of these um, rocky roads throughout the journeys that we're getting to learn now. Yeah. But we didn't get to see that. We didn't get to see the rock star life. We just got to see the great music. We got to see the production of Missy Elliott, Aaliyah, Genuine, him mm -hmm. being a genius just uh, with Jay-Z or other other of our greatest rappers that we 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 know and love today. Exactly. Didn't know the stuff behind it. Now, we've seen athletes. We've seen rappers. We've seen plenty of people speak on their road to addiction, in particular with painkillers. Some of they they break a, a ligament or something, got to start taking them before you know it. They own them, chewing them every day, and it's a it's a, it's a way of life. Or a, a simple tooth root canal. You getting caught up, and now you in a lifestyle where okay, this is parallel to me creating. Oh, this is dope. Oh, you start finding similarities between the drug and what you actually do. Mm -hmm. And oh yeah, then it also happens to numb pain. Let me rock with these joints, mm -hmm. and it's very convenient that they're so easily accessible in the culture and the game that I'm in. <laughs> yeah. It's a recipe for disaster. It's not surprising that it that that he fell under this. I'm sure a lot of other of our greats have. Salute to his um his testimony, and I'm glad he's doing better. Yeah, he also went on to say, and this is the part, like I said, when you when the rappers when they glorify it and the people, they never kind of give you the dark side of it. Now he goes on to say, but the withdrawal was brutal. It took nearly uh, two weeks. He said one of the toughest things I've been through in my life. He goes on to say the only thing that got me through it was my kids, my girl. And the help of God keeping me in my mind still. Um, he's still working at it. Obviously, looked great. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was time he blew up. Somebody, they, uh, this article here, they put like a uh, side by side picture. Man, it's like a huge contrast from where you, you know, how Timbo used to look back in the day. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah. And like you say, sometimes people, no matter how you get on it, you know, whether the doctors give it to you, find it in the street, um, it becomes a, a dependency. And it's not as easy as people think just to drop it. So for him to be able to do that, he had a death wish. I mean, that's just like, you know, um, anybody else. Like if you at some point you're going to keep taking too much of it and it's going to kill you mm -hmm. because it's never going to be enough. You know what I mean? To feed that habit. So a miracle. I always tell people a story. It was a guy that I know. You know what I mean? I used to converse where we don't um, converse no more. But uh, he talks about how he was on crack for 15 years. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And. He actually kicked the habit. How many crackheads you know actually kicked the habit? You know what I mean? So oh, I was man. like, that's really, we used to like make fun of him back in the day, but I could regret it because it's like, yo, that's the first thing you're going to say. You know, like somebody was knowing you a crackhead, but mm -hmm. he overcame that, man. And um, really, that's inspirational. It should be inspiration for people like, you can do it too. It ain't going to be easy. Like you said, anything that's worth having. It's never going to be easy. That road is never easy. It's never easy. You know, when you're going for something, like you said, you want you ain't going to just have that body. Mm -hmm. You got to put that fucking work in. Period. Period. So, you know, shout out to Timbo. And I, it's, it's a, I'm glad that he's coming out and he's he's given his truth. And we talked about it with uh, a little Wayne and, and, and the things that he deals with and the inspiration and the, the lessons that he would give to other people if he kind of put on public light some of the things that he was going through. And I hate to throw his name out there like that, but any rapper that's going through what they're going through. They publicize everything else. If they went and publicized some of the demons and how they were going through it, I think it would change the perspective of a lot of the young rappers that we're seeing passing away now to things that they thought was cool, caught up in the culture, and now they are dependent and addicted to it from even starting it to begin with or, or going through that road of kicking it to have it and, themselves. Um, and uh, my man, uh, Moneybag Yo, he was on the um, Breakfast, Breakfast Club. Club yeah. and he was talking. I don't, you seen the interview yet? I no? didn't. Okay, well, anyway, he was talking about... Um, he was drinking lean. And he was sluggish and everything. And it was like, Angela, he actually did a great job because she was really pressing. Like, so you still want to rap about it? And she was even asking about, you know, despite that it teaches kids that, you know, or influences kids, you know, to do it. She asked some real good questions on that interview. But um, he was pretty much saying, I want your opinion on this. Like, it's the reality of what's going on. Like, yeah, I can rap about that, but they still want to do it. So I'm clean. I'm moving forward. You know, I mean, what do you, what do you think about that? Like, he's he pretty much saying, like, and if he if he told them not to do it, they still want to do it. 
Yeah, not tr- uh, maybe you in particular, there's one particular case you may not be able to stop, but you and Rich the Kid and yeah, yeah. Roddy Rich and whoever else the young culture is out here, mm-hmm. that's the voice of the young. If they all started doing it, then yeah, hell yeah, it'll be some change. It's a hundred percent it'd be some change. Right. Um, but that's still a young man. He's still going and, and living his life and going through his growth, and he may not see that yet. It's right. a whole different set of eyes at 25 than it is at 35. These kids got to live. They still got to see it for themselves. 